Well, we're here once again at a SHOT Show right. with Russell at Artisan Cutlery, and he's got all new stuff all over again. He seems to do this every year, I so know, let's right? find out more. So weird. Yeah. <laughs> well, I got a whole bunch of stuff this year, so first of all, would you like to start on the Artisan side or the CGRB side? You know, I really don't care. Let's let you make that decision. Let's go down to CGRB. Let's go CJRB. Yeah, all right, why not? So, Let's start off here. So let's start off with something that we actually just released recently. This is our first attempt at a crossbar lock. This is the Hectare. Simple style, like it's a good solid basic everyday carry. The action on the crossbar is fantastic. This comes in a whole bunch of different colors. I happen to like the green. So we have green and black accents. It's a comfortable finger choil up there. Not quite a full finger choil, but a little comfortable one. Great drop point blade and this is coming in around 50, 60 bucks. This is a fantastic knife if you really like crossfire style knives. It's simple, done well. It's kind of like the, it's kind of like if you took the pyrite and took kind of a concept of that and then yeah. just made it a crossbar style knife. I but, when I first saw it in the case and you got a whole bunch of different colors, mm -hmm. I mean, wow, I like wow, that's light. That's yep. light. Yeah. But it just is a nice size. It's light. It fits in the hand really well. I like this. I think this is going to be popular, like the pyrite. Tell you the truth. User. I mean, you can get it in pink, so you can give it. You can get it in yellow. You can get it. Oh my God, it's great. Yeah. We actually did a bunch of you know find in the woods sort of colors. We wanted <laughs> we wanted the pastels. So if you drop this in the woods, you dropped it out on a trip. This is something that you could just kind of you know, you're not going to lose it. And of course, for those of you that need to, we have black. You, know, you always have to have the black version. Yeah. All right, so okay. that one is actually available right now, so you can find those available Woo. Okay. most places where our knives are sold. So why don't we move on to the Protos? Okay, All right, let's so do let's, I'm going to scooch this one over a little bit. Let's start right here with one of our newest collaborations with Ray Laconico. We did the Echo a while ago with him. Now we have the Prado. This one is a much bigger knife. This thing is not remotely small. Uh, can't say we're going to do the fat carbon handles, but we are going to do this with these more square-edged handles and this very thin and very lightweight clip point blade. I like the way this sits in hand. Ray's really happy with it. And for what it is, again, like here, just grab that. This one is so super So how do light. you, how, Prado? How, how, Prado. How do you spell that? P-R-E, P-R-A-D-O. Oh, P-R-A-D-O, yeah, okay, Prado. Prado, okay. And you know what, that's really light. Yeah. That's light, and the action's really nice too. We're getting good at our But yeah, that's, woo. It's very yeah, rare. Ooh, yeah, it's, that's it's, nice. As far as I know, I think it's also his first crossbar lock knife as well. So this oh, one yeah. turned out real nice, but it is it is a big one. It is a much bigger knife than I think it, it doesn't look big in pictures, but it feels pretty big. That's at least yeah, I think it's over three and a half, maybe. Yeah, just by a hair. Yeah, okay. That okay. clip point looks wonderful too. Like it's got a Yeah, I like the blade shape too. It's a slicer. I think it's just a big old slicer and it's got that great design language. I really like that we kept it square because we were thinking about doing like a contour one. I think we made it too like bulky. Yeah, okay. Like that, it just, it's in and out of the pocket really easily. Okay. All right, moving onwards to our next designer knife. Brand new designer on deck. This is the Nova designed by Christian Porterfield and kind of gives a bit of a tactical vibe. I think it hits a nice like in between with like EDC, comfortable, easy carry, and slightly tactical with that reinforced Tonto tip. I, it's a cool knife. I mean, the handle is nice and simple, but the blade is far from it. I think it gives, it gives a nice contrast, and the action on that thing is just buttery Ooh. because the handles are so light. Yeah. I think it's a very lightweight knife. Okay, yeah, that's nice. I dig it, I dig it. And now, because, you know, We've had enough people say that there are too many pyrites, we've made too many versions, blah, 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 I don't want to see more pyrites. No, no, no. There are more pyrites. That knife has done so well for us, and people are still buying it, and we are happy to make more. So, because of that, we did another version of the blade. This is the Bowie pyrite. Ooh, okay. And uh, I don't know if we're going to do the rose gold. I really think this looks great, but um, I'm, I'm into the way this looks, and that blade shape is something. Also, the fuller does work as a flipping point. You can roll it from the fuller. It gives you more options. And if you look at the tip, the tip is real thin. This is a pointy tip. I love the way this looks. This is such a neat addition to the Pyrite chassis. You get a blade that's a bit more interesting, a bit more dramatic, but you also overall do get 
more blade. You do actually have a wider overall blade with more just material to it. And I think it gives it another level of utility because this makes this a bit more, I'm not gonna say tactical, but it does make it a bit more robust in a way and a bit more functional for certain people looking for a tool that does certain things. I think this works out well and it looks great. It just has so much more character and I'm excited to get these out. Uh, I think we're gonna start trying to get these out around April in, okay. in a basic variant. And if we ever start getting a, uh, a full size one, I'm, I'm really happy to see that one too. And speaking of that, because everyone keeps asking, yes, we do now have a full size Warncliffe Pyrite. This one, uh, we're, it's, it's, it's a bit of a no brainer. Everyone keeps asking, so it's like, sure, let's make it. Full size Warncliffe Pyrite. So that's the big one, yeah. Yep. Just a bigger version with a uh, three and three quarter inch blade and a full size handle and it, it, it's a big warning by right. What more can I say? Yeah, it is. Everyone wants it. We know the feel of the original one. We know how well it works. Now it's just bigger. So, and I think this may be the strangest thing we've done this year. We want to try something genuinely different. We made some micro knives and this is the nap and this is the chip. And I, I'm, I'm kind of a fan of this guy. I mean, it's, it's real small, as I'm literally just trying to, you know, get my hands around this thing because it's so small. But what this does, we're probably going to just include a bit of paracord, a little bead to go along with this, and this is your dedicated small task knife. Or if you're packing light and you're not really intending to have a knife for you, say you're going camping, you have your kitchen knives, you have your prep stuff, you're not exactly planning on doing anything hardcore, maybe you're doing a little glamping, maybe you just want to carry as light as possible and your expectations are not that you're going to need to do anything with a larger knife than three inches, this slides in the slip, you get this nice little leather slip and this could almost fit in your wallet, it's so small. Oh yeah. With the bead and the paracord, it's accessible, it's small sight and for me personally, um, this is just, I have a magnet on my fridge, this goes on the magnet and this is a box cutter. Just pop it off the fridge, yeah. cut, cut, cut. I have packages, boxes, tape, envelopes, for something like this, it just put it there, you're good to go. This one has it, has, this is double edged. For someone that's looking for a little, uh, something to put in your Alto tin, that's a spearhead. Uh, I had Joe Flowers come by here earlier and he was absolutely losing his mind over this thing with all the things he could do with it, which of course, not all of us can be like Joe Flowers. But I like the fact we did this just like this. It's got this wide, yeah. relatively wider size blade. I like the point on this, and if you want to turn this into a bushcrafting tool, you could. If you want to add it to something to make your 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 toolbox a little better, or if you just want to carry a nice little double-edged knife, sure, goes in the slip just like that. Boom, done. So that's the nap and the chip, and I am excited to see where these go. I know it's not going to be everyone's cup of tea, but that's okay. We wanted to try something fresh. Someone may love it. Someone may just say it's the most useless tool ever. That's okay. It may not be for them. Yeah. It's nice to have a variety. Got to try something new once in a while. Oh, yeah. All right, so speaking of that, why don't we move on over to the artisan side over here. We have some fantastic new designer products coming out. So let's see. Let's start over on this side. Okay. This guy was actually just released recently right before SHOT Show. This is the Waden, designed by Nick Rogers over at Niche Designs. I am still trying to wrap my head around what to call this because it's like, it's a traditional, and no, it's not traditional. There's nothing yeah. traditional about this, but that little tie Damascus houndstooth accent, this more contoured handle, this backspacer with a bit of raise to it. I like how it's kind of like slightly stepped up and this blade shape that's, you know, got a really fine tip. There's nothing traditional knife about this. I mean, it's a front flipper frame lock for God's sakes, but somehow, Somehow the vibe of this is kind of gentlemanly. I I don't exactly know where to put it, but I do know that I really like this shape. It's got this gray kind of like, I can't say sci-fi, but kind of sci-fi. There's some kind of like alt universe where this, where this shape was a traditional knife. But whatever it is, this thing feels really nice. Kind of really ultra modern yeah, yeah. to futuristic type thing almost. Yeah. Also, I love the milling in a way, there. Ooh, wow! That's he intentionally. Why does everything on this case feel light to me? It well, feels this light. This one should actually be heavier than normal because he actually intentionally asked us to not mill out the titanium. Wow! He but it's still, to, he wanted to have a little extra weight in the pocket because you want that knife to feel like it's in your pocket. And I can dig it. I think it works well with this because this was really light. I think it doesn't really add much to the experience. And with that weight, there's something about it that feels more reassuring. 
Yeah, but I bet it's not doing much more than four ounces if it even does that. I mean, it's not exactly a big knife either, but... No, but yeah, I, I, I get you. That's got to be in the three, upper threes maybe. Somewhere yeah, around there. it's pretty light. It's also one heck of a blade. Like, that's a real slicey blade or something that's got a, a, a not full... It's just got a flat grind without that full flat, and it's... Got a got lot of micro milling here on this yeah. for texture. Feels oh. wonderful to hand. So that is the weight in. That one is available now. So... Moving on, we're to the actual prototype for this year. Okay. Why don't we start with our boy Dylan Mallory? He unfortunately couldn't be ah. here this year. But this is the Ornus. We've actually been working on this knife for several years. Dylan has done several revisions of this knife. It's one that just, we did a CGRB one a few years ago that just didn't quite work. And it, it needed to hit the cutting room. It just, it just got dropped off the line of knives that we were doing. And it went back to the drawing board. And this is what came out three years later, and this thing is fantastic. It's it's light, it's slicey, it's flowy. I like this little bit of a, the cutout here that's almost like this swoopy accent here. The action on this thing is amazing, and it feels great in hand. Well, I like, like Dylan's stuff, yeah. It's got that, that characteristic, you know, he's got a handle that dips up, a blade that's a little bit lower than the handle. I love that, I really like that blade shape. I mean, it's like, yeah. I, I can't, I'm not sure if I should call it a drop point or a modified drop point or a yeah. modified worn clip. I can't tell what it is, but it's great. And yeah. this thing cuts like crazy. Nice little button lock, but it's not little. It's a full size EDC, that's for sure. It's a big but one. yeah, we, I mean, you can see Dylan's design language in this. Mm -hmm. This is not unlike mm -hmm. several other knives that he's done. So yeah, and, and that's good. Um, it feels he, like it has he that. He does that. It feels like it has, forward, it has forward momentum. It feels like it's moving. Yep. Like Dylan's designs are aerodynamic. They're kind of sexy. They're kind of like you know, yeah. race cars, planes, things that move. That's where his design language kind of sits. And this one is, you know, it's named after a bird. Yeah. It's meant to be kind of a, it's, it's a knife that's light and airy and has some like loft to it. Yeah. I think it's great. So. Going from the land to the sea, we have our newest design by Triple Stripe Naya. So Jonathan Shaw over at Triple Stripe, his last night design, the BOA, was great. We did fantastic oh, okay. with that one. This is the Prime. And since Jonathan has a lot of uh, ocean faring experience, I look at this one and my brain immediately goes to some of those older like Mariner style knives, the one with the, uh, the, the sheep foot blade and the marlin spike on the back, the whole steel handle. This blade is just so nice in hand. Like look, look, you look at, you just got a nice like, the belly transitions right to the tip. It really feels like a user knife, but it's not really big. The handle is really trim, so you have this nice thin handle, larger clip, and this really nice kind of ripple pattern that we put on there for the milling. It gives you a nice grip in hand, but this feels like a user. Like you have this little divot right here where your thumb goes in, and this just is just, it feels like it's meant to cut. It's meant to sit there and be a comfortable user. Let's so, pass over to you. Jonathan Shaw. Jonathan Shaw. Yeah, okay, okay. Triple I've heard stripe, that name before. Triple Stripe Knives. He is going places. We are so happy that we pulled on one of his first designs. And honestly, he has some amazing design language. Someone who is, you know, just turned 18. Wow, his, young. His view of the knife Woo. was entirely different than mine ever could be. And it shows. This design is something that I'm like, I, I know I've seen elements like this, but it's never put together quite like this. Yeah, very nice. Feels light, feels thin, contoured. The contouring's great, and that ripple pattern really gives you some actual like grip oh, yeah. in the hand. Oh yeah, there's, it's, yeah, it's got grip to it. Yeah, you're right. Um, woo. It's really yeah, he's nice. doing well. He's doing great. <laughs> I mean, he just, he just posted a picture of him. He just got, just did his a, a snow a snow deployment today. So he's all geared up and oh, kitted out. that's right. You were telling me about yeah, that. He yeah, just, he yeah. just went from, turned 18, went into the Canadian military. Woo. He's doing it. He's doing it. All right. Moving on. New Ray Laconico. And I, I am real happy about this because this is a Laconico. So this is the Rebel. And if anyone's seen this before, Ray actually did this as one of his most recent custom runs. And I think for me, this is the most modern Laconico design I've seen. And the way this is, it fits in hand, it feels comfortable, it feels like it's, it, it really does melt into your hand. But I do love this clip point. Actually, funny enough, the Prado, I do believe that the Prado is actually inspired by the Rebel, at least the blade shape. You see some of the same yeah, DNA Yeah, oh there. yeah, okay. Handle's quite different, but there's some DNA, because we weren't sure we were doing this one, and I had to kind of beg and plead Ray to see if we can do this one. He's like, okay, sure. 
And this one, um, I love it. I think out of all the Laconico knives that I've handled, this one speaks to me in a way that nothing else has. And it is a more modern piece. It has, you know, raised language in there, but that blade shape is different. It's a little bit more aggressive. It's a little bit more trim. It's a bit more sleek. And I am very much into this guy. I am so happy with this, and I really dig the way that we were able to bring this one to life. Yeah. Woo! It's very Laconico. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's very, I mean, it's, I always think of him as less is more in his design, mm -hmm. simplistic exactly. designs that are still very attractive designs. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. This one has a weird feeling of like, it's there is less is more here, but he certainly took a lot of time to make that blade feel like a bit more. Like there is more character to that blade than he normally put on a lot of his knives. And it really looks like there's there's evolution here. And after owning the, the custom version of this knife, I am absolutely in love with how this thing carries and feels and cuts great. It just, everything about this flows together so nicely. And I'm so glad we were able to bring this on and have a production version of it now. So Ray's gonna get these in the mail real soon and I am very excited to see his reaction to them. Okay, good. And finally, back to our, one of our favorites, Mr. Dirk Pinkerton. The man cannot go wrong in how his knives feel. This is the Kami. And this is his take on a folding kukri. We might be doing some modifications to the ah. take it down a little bit, but this okay. is really a, it's, it's real combat-y. This thing is an aggressive knife. Very aggressive shape. That recurve and that leading tip, we might see about bulking up that edge a little bit to make it look a bit more kukri-esque, but in hand, this thing is just locked in. And of course, if you're going tactical, doing a reverse grip for this is, there's something really good about this one. But just, 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 Try it out. Dirk is really happy with this. We had a, I've had a nice chat with him. He loves the way this feels. He got his protos right before Shot Show, and this one for him is exactly what he wants to carry. It fits. It hits all those, just all those points of what Dirk likes about his knives. I'm into it. I think for me, it's something that I, I can look at and just like, yep, that's that's got a purpose. Yeah, I agree with you on the flipper tab. I mean, I, I think I mute it a little bit yeah. more. It, yeah. also make, it also makes that kukri shape a bit more prevalent because yes. you see, it kind of like, you have more of a choke point than a like, a, a, I don't you know probably, You it, probably yeah. don't need as much. It'll push button the way it is. Oh yeah. Yeah, but uh, yeah, less of a sail. Hmm. But and that blade shape, that blade shape is just so aggressive looking. I don't know if you could even make it flush with the bolster there or not. We're going to be, or that be cutting it. We're going to angle it a different direction. Okay. But no, I the overall uh, design of the knife and that blade shape. Oh yeah, I think spectacular. Gotta love Dirk. Like the man, the man cannot miss. His oh, designs yeah. always feel amazing, and even if it's not quite like the most extravagant design. There's always something about his stuff that has so much thought put into it about every element of the piece. So we're really happy to work with him on this one. And um, that comes, that is the end of our lineup for this year. We seem to, hmm? This one down here, is that his in a different uh, Yeah, different scale? color. Oh, okay. Yeah, See, just... I was really attracted to that when I looked oh, in yeah. the case. Yeah, it's that's... the same damn knife. Yeah. <laughs> fat carbon, but that one's got a, a fat carbon look at that. instead of the full tie scale. It takes the weight down a whole bunch. That carbon is crazy, isn't it? Woo! Nice. I haven't seen that one before. I think when we blasted yeah. it and it gave it its, its own kind of finish, but I do dig that. With the red, it's got that really aggressive look to it. <laughs> That stands out, that's it for is. sure. It is, cool? I'm not sure if we're gonna be running this as a full production one, but um, I do happen to like this one quite a bit. So, we'll see. If people like it, then maybe we'll run it in full production, or maybe we'll find an exclusive uh, dealer to do it. But, another example of the Kami. All right. Thank Thanks. you so much for your time. I really appreciate Absolutely. you taking Thank time. Absolutely, thank you for stopping by. Always good to see you.